1v1 Caldera Safinery blue side. It's KVN as a fast here support commander that fights in melee combat. Lots of great buffs with some debuffs and control abilities too. And up against is Fusrodar as a Lord Commissar. Good offense and support fights in melee combat and begins with a refractor field. So what do we have? Sentinel on the way immediately and KVN with some Banshees coming onto the field and they can get shot down pretty quickly okay. if the Lord Commissar uses his Execute well. Inspire Courage I believe it's called. If he gets that on Guardsman, has another Guardsman nearby and the Sentinel all shooting at the Banshees. They are going to drop pretty damn fast and if he doesn't take them down he's at least going to get them off the field quickly. And it is some more Guardsman for, for Srodar and I imagine we're going to see at least one shuriken cannon we weapon team from KVN, maybe two. Though he might go for rangers to try and deal with this Lord Commissar effectively since snipers do really big chunks of damage to the commanders now. You have some Daravidas in heavy cover trying to outshoot this Sentinel, doing a pretty decent job at it too. I think one of the models was caught out of cover, which is why it went down there. Here comes the Lord Commissar though, and this guy has a really dangerous sidearm. It's like 18 DPS or something on that pistol, but Howling Banshees are in there. And these guys can be so dangerous to low-level melee commanders if they get close. Well, low-level commanders in general, but melee commanders are more likely to get stuck in melee combat with them as they are now. But the Sentinel has the ground pound, and KVN, I think, spotted that upgrade coming up. Good thing you get a pretty clear visual for that and gets away otherwise it would have been stomped and maybe lost another model or two in melee to the Lord Commissar as they were all on the ground and stuff. Here comes a shuriken. Will we see another though? That is the question. Might go 1-1-1. But I think double shurikens would be the safer bet in general. Fars here missing with a special attack because that stuff is moving. Sentinel is going to stop her. Yes. She might carry on a push against those guards when they do have their sergeant set up to nine models and reinforcing two at a time. She's going in there. Does it do a huge amount of damage? I think it's around about 35 DPS, maybe 30 DPS melee. Not too bad. And she can put Guide on herself. But not spectacular either. There's Guide though on that shuriken. Gonna increase its range and increase its damage. It really is a fantastic starting buff for the Farsia, getting shot up there though, and is forced to retreat. You saw the range on that shuriken, shooting from all the way over there. Lord Kumasa now leading the line for the Imperial Guard. Gonna run into a shuriken if he's not careful. It was actually past the arc there, but he's now backing off again. Doesn't know what else is around. He knows there's Banshees prowling somewhere, and here they are. Gonna try and flank inwards, it really is. A powerful move in general to flank inwards from the outside on this map could do some real damage and here come the Banshee to try just that Sentinel needs to be disciplined here gonna keep it back and away and I think does well if he went in for the stomp he might have got caught at really close range by the Shuriken and the Dire Avengers and gone down doesn't take much of that close range fire from a setup team to take down a Sentinel since it's only one model all of that fire going into one thing health just disappears we have some Catachins on the way for Force Rodar, so that's his response to the Shuriken. I don't think he saw the other one. Maybe he'll get some spotters as well, but Catachins can do some work for you here. They can flank in from the outside, use their long range all reliable, and then try and melee the other one from a flank. We'll see. He, sh he might be okay if he uses the Sentinel well, since he can disrupt with the Catachins and maybe run the Sentinel in on the other one if he's careful and times it right keep his Lord Commissar and his Sentinel split, move in with the Commissar, draw fire and then move the Sentinel in because Sentinels are pretty quick on their feet as you can see here. Two to one for KVN. VP advantage in general though is for Fusro Dar with around about 100 VPs in the lead right now but it's so early on VPs hardly matter right now. Wow. Does get in there with the Sentinel just about in that instance, used the Sentinel to draw the fire, ran everything else in, and then disrupted with the Catachins. Catachins have that disruption from long range. They also have a defensive smoke bomb, which is 
pretty useful. Grants suppression immunity and I think some range damage resistance also. So that can be powerful if he gets everything in a blob or rather if he gets caught in a blob like it is now, he can drop that smoke. How much energy does it cost to drop it though? He's using the aura libel again. Farsi again into trouble. Those catatures might have been able to finish her off if they were hip to it and forced the melee combat there. The Banshee's also getting away. Catachin is doing well so far. They can also help shut those Banshees down. Sentinel again is able to stop, but can he get in there in time to repair? Should be okay, yep. Double repair goes on. And good play from Fusrodar. Dealt with two shurikens and meddling Banshees pretty well there. Maybe KVN could have been a bit better getting stuff closer quicker now again he's attacking with a single shuriken everything else literally is off the field here come banshees is an improvised explosive dangerously close and kvn does not have anything to spot it rangers of course would be the tech the tech unit for elder is going tier two and i imagine going for some wraith guard but we shall see I think fire dragons would be um, dangerous because they need to get close and catechins at close range with their shotgun blast and everything else shooting them down. Yeah, it is Wraith God. So Katachin is going to try and get into melee combat with them. But that's going to be tough with double shurikens and the Katachins, the, sorry, the Howling Banshees with their washout available as well to slow them down. Katachins, of course, do not have a melee charge. So they can't charge into combat passively. They need to just run in. Shuriken gets caught. The improvised explosive did go off. There's Guide now on this Shuriken. Look at the range it has now with Guide. Crazy. I think it's 50% more range and 30% more damage, which is not bad at all. Good push though from Fusro Dar. He's keeping the Guardsman very diligently near the Sentinel and it's making it tough for KVN to push. But here come the Wraith Guard. They already have their Spirit Seer Warlock. Stomp though goes in. Grenade is missed and KVN is completely off the field apart from these annoying Banshees who could, who finished the cap on that natural rep there. They're most likely going to drift over and go for the power. Wraithguard get a single volley on the Catechins and now the Catechins are into melee. These guys have power melee weapons. Purely for balance reasons of course. No reason why... They should have power melee weapons in terms of the law. 292 to 457 is a 2 to 1 cap for Fusro Dart. And the Banshees have drifted over to try and bash power. They should get at least one generator here, but perhaps not much more than that. Got the have their Sarge on the way. Gives them a Melter Gun. And Howling Banshees are getting their Exarch up. Have the Aspect of Fleetness. Down goes one of the gens. But now they're going to eat a stomp. There we go. Only got three of the models though. Here comes the Exarch. But that's a hell of a lot of stuff to shoot at them now. We need to play this very carefully. Or just run the hell away. There's the washout. They can chop up some of the guards. And of course he knows that the stomp has been used. So he can pretty much just stay in there. Wait for the Wraith Guard to arrive. And that was a nasty volley. Wraith Guard able to of course fire on the move these days. Although they were nerfed in several other ways. And they're going to go after the gens. Good play from those banshees. Held up those things very well. The Lord Commissar now comes out with the power sword. Gives him lead by example. Can, he can use that to try and disrupt those banshees. If the catechins aren't around to help. No, needed to use attack ground there I think to try and time that. It does take the Wraith Guard longer to wind up their weapons now. Before they fire so... Staying moving is generally going to do you pretty good against Wraith God. Even more so than usual. 271 to 236. Double Shurikens right into the face of the Lord Komasai. Uses his Basilisk Flare there to reduce their damage. We're actually getting close enough to be shot anyway. Here comes an Ogrins. Doing some decent damage with their Ripper Guns. I forget the DPS of them, but it is reasonable. And once they get moving with their melee charge, they can cover some ground, these guys. Bonad Leader on the way, of course. Not a cheap 
leader, but does make them that much more durable and gives them user red. These guys have super heavy infantry armor, so we might see KVN think about getting some Dark Creepers up. The Lord Commissar wants to keep his red handy for those Basilisk Flares, I think. With Ogrins there and Double Shurikens, gonna want to try and get in. He spotted the Webware Gate being built and it gets taken down. Big chunk of XP there for the Ogrins, as you can see. Tier 3 for KVN. So no Dark Creepers. He wants a Fire Prism, I guess. Uh oh. Kratichuns do get away with two models. One to one cat, banshees, and double shurikens in the mid. Need to try and set up and persuade this commissar and ogrins to stay out of the mid, but is he gonna be able to do so? I think he'll he'll be happy to send those banshees into those ogrins. Needs to needs to be careful about friendly fire though. Those Wraith Guard do not care what they explode. Where is the Farseer? She's coming back onto the field. Surely wants to put guide on those banshees. Sentinel gets the stomp on the Banshees. That was a little bit sloppy there from KVN. Could have done a little bit better to bait the stomp out, but actually gets hit by it. And this Shuriken is going to go down. Yes. No. Does not go down. Those guys were suppressed just in time. The Gravity Blade only caught one of the models, but in general, that's going to be a great tool to use against the Ogrins. And Ogrins getting away with two models and that is perhaps lucky to get away with two models there. Bit of a messy engagement but um, the shurikens got away, the ogrens get away but will this sentinel get away? The stomp is ready to use, there it is. Trying to chase it down with her sidearm. The farcia Can't quite manage it I don't think. You never know. A few more of those bursts might do it. Down to 53 hit points, but Guide on herself to help those shuriken bursts. And down goes the Sentinel. Beautifully done by KVN. Did not give up and had the wherewithal to use the Guide and takes down a unit. Into tier 3. Needs a bunch of power first before he can get a Fire Prism up. Puts up another Webway though. Over on here, on this side, on the west side. To go after this power at will, pretty much, of course, has one in base as well to use. And Wraith God can use those things. And they will tear through the power pretty quickly. Is he using it? Looks like he's going in... No. I guess he knew that reinforcers were coming imminently. Grenade does not quite finish off the power. Both players into tier 3. Very rare, of course, to see a Baneblade in a 1v1 match since it costs an insane amount of resources. 1,000 rec, 200 power. KVN, what are you going for? Does he get a Deacon up or does he get a Fire Prism? I would probably get the Fire Prism up. We'll keep those Ogrins flung around and combine that, combine that with the Gravity Blade, Double Shurikens and Warshout. We'll see how effective these Ogrins are in combat. They're always going to be effective at drawing fire. But is that enough? 260 to 383. Use your red goes off, disrupting those Banshees. There is the Gravity Blade and the Suppression. But as Ogrins did get into combat before any of this happened, the Banshees go down. That's a big win for Fusrodar. Ogrins will have a little bit of an easier time to get into combat. Did he use the Basilisk Flare there? I'm not sure. Maybe he did. That's how the stuff got close enough. 260 to 368. 2 to 1 for KVN. The next purchase is going to be vital. It looks like he's going for the Avatar. Because he hasn't purchased anything else. I thought there was going to be a Fire Prism for sure. Catachuns are taking a massive risk. Looks like they are buffed by the Lord Commissar's Inspire Courage, but wasn't quite enough to save them. No, nope, the Farseer gets a Sink Kill. Very gravity bladey, wasn't it? So Banshee's down, Catachin's down, and KVN also lost one of his Shurikens. So both players down to three units. An explosive beginning to Tier 3. We have an Avatar and a Lehman Russ. 
Now, I think he should go for the Executioner because the Avatar is super heavy infantry and he can get those rapid firing shots. As long as he's diligent with his moving his tank, the Avatar shouldn't really capture it, I don't think. We'll see, though. Halfway there, the Lehman Rust will hit the field slightly before the Avatar, that's for sure. But the Avatar is going to have a field day fighting his Ogrins with the Wailing Doom especially. He needs to be diligent to try and dodge that Fustro Dart. Much easier said than done, of course, especially when you actually get into combat and you have that second or so where the unit doesn't respond to moving away once it's into combat and is playing out some attack animations and stuff. This close-range firefight from the Dire Avengers and the Guardsmen. They should have forced melee combat there, I think, with the Dire Avengers since they have their XR. Neiman Russ is up. What does he do with it? No sign of any upgrades yet. Maybe just get the elite tank crew and wait. Avatar hits the field. He must know that KVN is into tier 3 since he didn't see anything else after the Wraith Guard. So he's got the Avatar and I think after that he should drop an Autar. Maybe try and get that fusion gun of hers up. That would be cool. Lord Commissar goes for Bionic Eye which gives defensive buffs to the Inspire Courage, actually turns it into Inspire Determination. And Emperor's Wrath, 230 to 336. Smack, Refractor Field, helping the Kumasar. Wow, just about gets away, it does. It does help him finish the cap there. Him and Russ taking shots. Needs to be careful though. Wraith Guard moving up here. Ogrins obviously going straight after them. Wailing Doom is dodged. And what does the Avatar do now? Does he turn to engage the Ogrins? He does. And I think that is the right choice. He knows he's going to bleed them. Down goes one of the models. Thanks for that pretty sweet grenade from these Dire Avengers. Ogrins now struggling to path around the Avatar. Smack this guy. Does do splash damage of each hit, the Avatar. And a big chunk of damage. There's the Wrath of Cain. I think he should have just kept, kept attacking them there. Try and bleed models off them. Fusro Dart getting a heavy weapon squad on the way. Is it going to be a Laz Cannon to try and snare this Avatar? AVN has Seer Council. And that is going to be a tough fight to say the least for the Ogrins, especially if those guys start leveling up. They're going to jump in disrupting the Ogrins and doing damage and then start going to town with their power melee weapons. 2-1-3 to 3-3-6. It's nicely poised for a big finish. Wraithguard struggling to get back out into the foot. He might want to put a webway gate in the middle here. KVN just to make that a little bit quicker. Maybe around his power kind of. Doesn't have one down the west side any longer. It is a Laz Cannon, and he can see that, so he might send the Seer Council right on that thing. No, he's just sending in the Avatar, which is going to take a lot of shots. There's the Wailing Doom, that's what he wants to use. Didn't spot it quickly there, Fusrodar. Not sure if he could have got away, even if he did spot it really quickly. But look at the damage this Avatar is taking now. That's what happens when you stand in the firing arc of a Laz Cannon for too long. Gets out of the firing arc, but the Lehman Russ is continuing to strike. Right Lance getting really close to this Lehman Russ here. And that might be a dead Lehman Russ. We will see. It's the Wraith Guard of all things that are forcing melee combat here. Mines dropped. Right Lance continues its DPS. Wow. The Wailing Doom actually set off the mines and... Did a heavy amount of damage to the heavy weapon squad, but they do get away. Avatar also looks like it's going to get away. A very brave Lord Commissar is chasing it with his power sword, knowing that the Lehman Russ is backing him up. He's going for the Xeno's power claw now. 85 DPS, heavy melee. Not sure that's required. He should just keep the power sword, I think. But hey, he's going for it. See, so Council now chasing him down. 194 to 336. Avatar should be able to get into base safely and the Lord Commissar is going to go down 
Seer Council tearing him apart in retreat there. Meanwhile, our Avengers on capping duty. I guess we just finished that cap. Farseer is down in the middle. And we have Ogrins, a model short. They have actually paid for the reinforcement. That's pretty expensive reinforcing. 70-15 for Ogrins. But they didn't stay around HQ long enough to actually get the avatars now healing up. He will heal up 2% per second at base, which is not bad for him. What are these guys up to? Going for a VPD cap? 193 to 336. How does KVN approach now? That Lehman Russ is proving to be a pain in the ass. Does have a Bright Lance. And the Farseer can protect the Bright Lance with the levitation field from the Ogrens. And the Lehman Russ is relatively low on health. Few volleys from the Wraith God and the Bright Lance maybe getting a couple of shots in. It's going to go down. Is he going to wait for the Avatar? The Avatar is moving out of base, not on full health, but I guess he's got some urgency here. That's kind of in play again. Lucky to get away with six hit points, wasn't it? I think when I looked. Ouch. Big shot on the Farce here. And they run straight into the Levitation. Wraith Guard are chasing the Lehman Russ. It's some brave guards are moving into melee combat. Avatar, what does he do? Goes after the Ogrins. He's running through some mines here. And now the last cannon coming into play. It's the Ogrins going. Oh, they're in retreat. I thought they were going after the Wraith Guard. Good thing they did retreat as well. The Lord Commissar is back on his feet. Ouch, that's an Emperor's Wrath. That would have been absolutely devastating if those guys didn't retreat after they kept running up there avatar trying to finish off the last cannon not quite you see that refractor field effect completely freaks out when it goes into retreat in certain instances 139 to 336 hmm so the lemon rust did go down kvn in the ascendancy but he needs to get back out onto the field how much power for Dar has Another webway down there. And we do have some sneaky yeah, Dire Vaders getting the decaps as a single now for KVN. Whereas the Lord Commissar trying to cap or at least decap the VP. Doesn't prevent him being not flying by the Wailing Doom. So it's a no cap game. Gonna be a single but I think KVN is gonna come out and get the contested and his natural pretty quickly. The Lord Commissar can't hang around with the avatar there. Takes out Dire Avenger though as they retreat out. 138 to 331. Some Ogrins going up this west side. Right, Lance can't really help a whole lot now that the Lehman Russ is down. 134 to 331. And it's a single for red. But KVN will get that 2 to 1. And just basically needs to hold it. Is Fusrow Dar saving for a Bane Blade? Surely not. Imagine he wants to get another. L no. Kasukin, I guess. Just get loads of Kasukin. Try and outshoot KVN and tie up those Wraith God whenever you can. Plasma Kasukin will do a good job to the Avatar. But those Seer Council are very, very mobile. Look at that. Looks like he is saving for a Bane Blade, though. That's going to be interesting to see. Just as I said, you very, very rarely see them in 1v1s. In fact, I can't remember the last time I saw a Bane Blade come out in a 1v1 match. Usually a lot more urgency and pressure on the player. We have come to a desperate pass. That was um, Emperor's Wrath combined with some mines there. 1, 2, 4, 3, 10. Avatar is taken. Last cannon hits. Guardsman might want to get some plasma guns up or something. Double cap now for KVN. He's got Fusro Dar's natural and the contested. Ogren's here on capping duty. The action is split quite a lot. It's a frantic ending. What is Fusro Dar up to? He really is going for a Bane Blade. I mean, there's a Wraith Guard and there's a level 3 Bright Lance. Level 3 Wraith Guard as well. So not sure how smart that is. K 
KVN does not have the red for a nuke, which is good for any Bane Blade that might hit the field. Ogreen has did finish that cap as well. Those are the far sea is hanging out over here to try and harass anything that tries to cap this VP. And it'll be Dire Avengers that get this, and Avatar does get back to base. Um, with a decent amount of hit points. So it should be out pretty quickly. Time field is up from the Armoury Assyrian. And he's going for the Ghost Helm here to help him control the Ogrins and the Lord Commissar, I guess. Double cap it is. The Bane Blade is on the way. But here comes a Fire Prism for KVN. Going to toss this Lord Commissar aside and then retreat out. Yep, there we go. It's the battle of the anti-vehicle setup teams, Laz Cannon versus Bright Lance, and here come the Wraith Guard to spoil the fun. Uh, or not, they were firing at the Lord Commissar for some reason. Triple cap now. He will get his natural back. And a Bane Blade is, I mean, KVN hasn't seen anything for a while, so he might be suspecting something crazy like a Bane Blade. Fire Prism will do good from long range, but a 1v1 fight, obviously, it's going to get crushed by a Bane Blade. But there's multiple targets for KVN to fight a Bane Blade with. And I guess he could put the Lord Commissar on one, the Ogrins on the other. But that's a big ask with all of this stuff running around. Avatar, Seer Councils, and a somewhat anti-melee Farseer. And he has the time field, of course. Oh! Fustro Dar cancels the Bane Blade and then gets it again. That's going to take even longer now to hit the field. I was going to say, maybe he's had second thoughts when he saw the time field ability. So that's going to shut down the Blame Blade and make it very vulnerable to everything. Ogrin's back and away. These guys hit in level 3. They've done pretty damn good this game. They really have. That Banshee loss was really painful for KVM, but he has responded and recovered well. And then Fusrodar, of course, losing the Catatrins and, more importantly, the Lehman Russ. Bane Blade halfway done. Would have been on the field already if he didn't cancel it. And obviously, he is waiting for it to push, I think. Trying to take a look at what KVN has. I don't think he knows the Fire Prism is on the field right now. He's going in right now, in fact. He's not waiting for the Bane Blade at all. Are we going to see Mind War used? He needs, she needs to... Manage her energy well here. Uses the time field to shut down the Laz Cannon. Good usage of it. Ouch. That was the Emperor's Wrath. Which does that thing do friendly fire? So I think it just really hurt those Ogrins. 124 to 116. Ogrins just about getting away there. With very little hit points. And the Lord Commissar is going to get chopped up pretty easily. Pretty bad engagement there for Force Rodan. Not sure why he tried to push. Has a Bane Blade, but needs to reinforce Ogrins now. Needs to repurchase the Lord Commissar. And that was a pretty needless push, I think. Bane Blade is up. Avatar's pretty low. That's the Demolisher Cannon. Would have been really bad news for those Dire Avengers that didn't get the head out of there. And a Manticore up as well. So he's getting some stuff going here for Throw Dart. Just a little bit later than he might have liked. Cancelling the Bane Blade. I wonder if that was just a straight up mistake. 2 to 1. KVN holds on to it. Looks like he's not really pushing for the triple now that he sees that Bane Blade. There's the Basilisk Flare trying to shut down that Bright Lance. And the Bane Blade is leading the line, which often happens with Imperial Guards is they have a lot of squishy infantry to the tanks at the front. 1, 2, 4 to 70 and the 2 to 1 continues to tick down. Lord Commissar is there though and it's Guardsmen on capping duty. Wraith Guard might edge forward and decimate them but the Fire Prism is going to get its spread shot there or dispersed shot I think it's called to try and knock them off the cap. But they get the decap Fire Prism shoots again. Maybe he start thinking about a bunker for straight. Oh, he doesn't have the red. Been using that Basilisk Flare quite a lot. And for good reason. It's a really good global. Manticore Strike. 
doesn't quite do enough to force off this here count, so we'll continue to chase there. Are they going straight after the Manticore? Yes, they are. There's a time field on the uh, main blade. Bright Lance getting shots. Fire Prism getting shots. Bright Lance has lost a lot of hit points already. You see the Heavy Bolter on front of the Manticore trying to outshoot those Seer Counts when it does help force them off. But that was a Bane Blade as well. And the Lord Commissar in there with his Xeno's Power Claw. Mid is uncapped here. Looks like it's quite determined to deal with this Bane Blade. Lord Commissar trying to cap, which is ill-advised, I think, to say the least. Level 5 Lord Commissar. What's the Farseer at? Farseer also at level 5. Now has Spirit Stones to support that Seer Council. Oh! Oh, I thought the Avatar went down. He's actually doing a sync kill to the Lord Commissar. Bane Blade is going to get chased off, I think, by the Fire Prism Autark being dropped in. And Bane Blade is done for. And that is pretty much GG, I think, for Fusro Dark. Autark, the nail in the coffin. Manticore Strike on nothing. Okay, then. Manticore's gonna go down. Fire Prism does. Wow, you get 53 red for taking out a Manticore. Wow. GG there from Fusro Dark. And it's going to be a victory for the Eldar player. No concede. Oh, yes, we do see a concede from Fusro Dot. Well, they have it. Pretty nice back and forth. I think um, KVN was a bit more disciplined going off the power, which is, I guess, a lot easier when you have a webway. Not that it really slowed down Fusro Dot so much. He had this contested power for pretty much the entire game with gens on it. And he managed to get a Bane Blade up. In strange circumstances, I mean, he did cancel it and restart it, which was unfortunate to say the least. If he didn't do that, he would have had it for that, what turned out to be a wasted push where he just lost stuff and then backed away. But um, I think KVN played it pretty well. Relatively safe. Wraith Guard into tier 3 stuff. I guess that works. Avatar did really well. And Seer Council, a good choice. These guys did actually get level 4 wow up to 3800 hit points they become seriously scary and a level 6 fast here and a level 5 lord commissar thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time